what is skin effect and why it's important in induction heating. In this video, I'm going to explain fundamentals behind induction heating and why skin effect appears. In a previous video, I explained how current carrying element creates magnetic field and how to calculate it analytically for different cases. Now let's understand the theory of induction in conductors like metals. When we apply direct current to coil, it creates static magnetic field. If we supply alternating current, magnetic field around coil changes along with the applied current. Mathematically, we can express it by adding trigonometric functions like sinus omega t to amplitude of magnetic field B0. So resulting magnetic field strength in a single point is shown in the graph. If we want to describe rate of change of magnetic field, we must derive it. And when we do it, angular frequency omega comes out of as a coefficient in front of the expression, which now contains a cosine. Both plots are shown together, and you can see that they are basically the same qualitatively, just shifted by a quarter of period, which is a property of deriving trigonometric functions. The reason we are interested in the rate of change is due to laws which explain induction of electrical currents. I will explain the process in two levels of difficulty secondary school level and undergraduate level. Changing magnetic field flux creates electromotive force measured in volts. So magnetic flux V is total magnetic field B going through a loop with area S. If it is changing, the rate of change of magnetic flux equals the potential that's created. If we apply this electromotive force to wire with resistance R, we get an induced current I. And we can say that all the power goes to heating the wire, as for example in case of resistive heater. So the expression for power is current squared times resistance. A more general explanation you would hear in a university would be through Maxwell's law, more specifically Faraday's law of induction. On one side of the equation you have a derivative of a magnetic field, and on the other side there is a rotor of electric field. So what does it mean? In a nutshell, changing magnetic field in a conductive media creates electric field, which can also be expressed in terms of current density. Current density relates to electric field just by a factor of conductivity. And this current density squared times conductivity results in power density in the workpiece. Theory is over. Now we move to a numerical model of coil with a piece of aluminum put inside. Alternating current is applied to the coil and our aim is to calculate the magnetic field inside of the coil and more specifically, the magnetic field in our conductor. To solve the problem, we use COMSOL numerical software, which divides the geometry in thousands of pieces and solves magnetic field in frequency domain. This software solves a set of equations which are slightly modified version of the Maxwell's equations, expressed in magnetic vector potential form. Now let's apply 1000 amperes of current with a different frequency to our 8 turn coil. If we have a low frequency like 1 Hz, Magnetic field looks like this, as if we had an empty coil. If we examine high frequency case, we see a different picture. Magnetic field is lower and pushed outside of the conductor. To understand the process better, let's look at an animation of this process when frequency is changed. We can see that increasing frequency creates an effect where majority of magnetic flux is concentrated near surface of conductor. This effect is called skin effect which describes how alternating electric or magnetic field intensity distribution is changed in conducting medium like metals. Reason why it happens is following. The total magnetic field in a conductor is a sum of two parts, original external magnetic field and induced magnetic field in a workpiece. As we change the frequency, the amplitude of external magnetic field does not change. However, amplitude of induced magnetic field is proportional to frequency of applied magnetic field. So total magnetic field is reduced the higher the frequency is applied. In which parts exactly it's reduced depends on geometry and location in the workpiece we are examining. To quantify this effect, let's examine magnetic field strength on this red line. In case of low frequency field, magnetic field strength acts similarly as there was no conductor. However, in high frequency case, magnetic field intensity drops exponentially when entering the conductor. This exponential drop in axial symmetrical case can be expressed with following equation. Here the most important value is skin depth, delta, which here is a distance between orange lines and governs how rapidly magnetic field drops. By definition, in distance of one skin depth, magnetic field drops e times. In other words, only around 37% of starting magnetic field is left after one skin depth. Formula for skin depth is shown in this by the equation 
and as you can see, material conductivity, magnetic properties, and frequency affects it. If we increase whichever variable, we can expect skin effect, leading to worse penetration of magnetic field if dimensions of our conductor are comparable to skin depth. Why all of these formulas were so important in context of induction heating? It is because frequency of applied alternating current dictates skin depth, which in turn affects how much heat is generated and where it's generated. In the next video I'll show you experiments of induction heating, induction melting, and most interesting of them all, levitation of molten aluminum. Subscribe to be notified, and see you then!